everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today I have a special treat for you. My good friend Dale Derry over at Metal Tips and Tricks has been working on a project for Adam Booth, the A-Bomb 79 channel. Now Dale needed something welded and it was a particular part that required some fixturing. So Dale sent it over to me, I got it welded up for him, I sent it back to Dale and he was able to get this piece of machinery put back together and sent over to Adam Booth. We put together a little video for you on it, so we hope you enjoy. Hi, my name's Dale and welcome to Metal Tips and Tricks. I want to talk to you about welding aluminum today and how easy it is to get it done. Now I've got a fume extractor back here, I've actually got two of them, and I'm sending one down to Adam Booth, but before I can do that, I need to fix something. There's an elbow right here where it broke, and this is a part that is cast aluminum. And aluminum itself has its challenges. For one, it has an oxide layer on it that melts at a lot higher temperature than the base metal. The other problem with this is it's cast aluminum, and that means there's different types of particulates in the aluminum casting itself that bubble to the surface and cause inclusions in your welding, which means it could crack and break at another time. So these things all have to be taken in consideration. So in order for me to weld this is, well, I'm incorporating the help of my friend, Jim Bollinger. Jim has a YouTube channel called Do Right Fabrication. And on his channel, he works in metal, of course. He welds it, he machines it, whatever it takes to get something built, Jim can do it. He is such a good welder. He's one of the teachers for Lincoln, you know, the great red welding machines. So I've incorporated him to actually weld this up because it's well past my ability. I don't even have a machine here in the shop that can weld aluminum. So I'm gonna toss this down to Jim. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. He's down in Florida, about the mid area of the state. So it's quite a toss for me to get that there but I'm sure he can make it. Hey, Jim, you ready for the part? Somebody's welding in your shop, I don't know who it is, but get ready, here it comes. What the? Sorry, Jim, I didn't realize it was you welding. Uh, apologies. All right, I'll make this one really easy. I know it's coming What? all the way to Florida, but I'm sure you can catch it. Really? Underhand, easy, here we go. That's the best you got? My wife can throw better than that. All right, you guys, I'm turning this all over to Jim. Let's go to him down in Florida and you can see what's happening. All right, so I got my workbench cleaned off from everything I was working on when uh, Dale beamed a few parts at me. And I had a few minutes to check them out and look at them. It's cast aluminum, uh, Dale was right about that. It is weldable, I think we can weld it up, I think we can fix it, no problem. Cast aluminum gives us a lot of challenges. Here's one of the major challenges. We don't know what it is. We don't know what the alloy is. We don't know how much aluminum is in it, how much copper, how much silica, how much of any of the other alloys that they take to make this. We don't know how much it is, so we don't know what filler metal to use. I'm gonna tell you that for most cast aluminum pieces, 4043 filler is probably gonna be your number one choice. Second behind that would probably be 5356. But my number one choice would be the 4043 because it has a higher silica count and that helps wet it in and wash in a little bit and give you a, a little bit smoother appearance in your weld. One of the other challenges of cast is cast is a little bit like a sponge. It's probably truly more like it's a crystalline structure that has a holes in it like a sponge. And in those holes, a lot of times are impurities. And those impurities tend to float out once we liquefy the metal while we're welding it. And the problem with that is it gets all over the surface of our weld and in our weld and it looks like crap. Nobody likes to weld cast. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Even if we clean it, we can clean it with all clean. We can clean it with acetone. We can clean it with a commercially available aluminum cleaning product with a stainless steel wire brush. We can wire brush it. We can clean it with non-chlorinated brake cleaner. We can use a whole series of things to make sure it's super clean. And as soon as we weld it, we get junk in it. There's nothing we can do about it. The way I've always treated it and the way of many other welders that I know treated it is if you weld it, you know it was clean and it's got junk in it, just grind it out and re-weld it. By grinding it out, we mechanically are removing those impurities and hopefully we're back to good metal because we've, we've liquefied it and we've allowed it to float out. Now we'll come back and weld it again. 
I have had to do it as many as four times because of just really, really bad junky cast metal that needed to be welded. And about the fourth time I did it, it was jam up. Most of the time you really only have to do it once, but every now and then that does happen. Because of that crystalline structure of cast material, when it breaks, it's kind of like a, makes like a puzzle piece. So when you put it back together, it'll just line right back up, just as nice as can be, and show us where it went. But we're gonna have to take this really thick piece of material, and we're gonna have to cut a, a very deep V in it so that we can get heat all the way to the center of this material so we have a through and through weld to make it strong or back to like it was when it was a new part. The trouble with doing that is we cut all the ends off our puzzle pieces so we don't know exactly where it lines up anymore. So I was thinking about it, here's what I think I'm gonna do. I just got a dropped off piece of 11 gauge steel and a couple other drops that came off my bandsaw over there. And I'm gonna weld this to here and I'm gonna do it in an inconspicuous area so I can cut it back off and reuse this drop again. I'm not cheap, I'm thrifty. <laughs> we can take this piece and it'll, it'll sit right about there. Another little drop of angle iron. We can bore a hole for this center hole right here, bore a hole in this piece of angle and bolt it up. Once we make this fixture, then we'll grind it because we can use this as it sits right now to get everything lined up true like it was before it got broken. Once we grind it, then we can bolt everything back in place and we know exactly where everything has to fit. All right, so it took a couple minutes to get the welder set up, put my uh, safety gear on. I'm not gonna gear up in a leather jacket. We're just doing a bunch of tack welds. I've got everything covered up with the long sleeve shirt. Let's start off by tacking this piece down to the workbench. Okay, so I went over and I just bored a 3 8 hole through here and put a, a 3 8 bolt nut. And what I'm gonna do is get this all set up so that it locates nice and square and true. And real quick, like I'm gonna throw a weld on it. Now, I've got everything in place. I'm gonna take a Sharpie marker. I'm gonna put a couple indexing marks. There, here, here. That way when I put it back in there, I'll get it right back in the same orientation. Now that I've gotten everything jigged up, I can take it apart and put the rotary file on it and start shaping all the parts. Right now I'm gonna take a Sharpie marker. I wanna mark all of the areas that I wanna V out. I wanna make a nice, nice V'd area. Pull our piece off the bottom. We're going to take the die grinder with a rotary burr in it and we're going to open this up. What I like to do, take a little kerosene. This is kerosene that I use when I'm machining aluminum. And I coat the rotary burr. What that does is help keep the aluminum from building up inside the burr.
the fixture, our index marks are lined up, it's bolted securely here in the fixture, everything's lined up where it should live. With that rotary burr, I open this up nice and deep. Going to be able to get in there real deep with the, the machine penetrate almost all the way to the root of the weld, giving us very close to a full thickness weld. For filler metal, we're going to use 4043 filler. I've showed you this trick before in some of my other videos. Take a full length rod, I like to cut them in half, especially when we're doing little uptight work. What I'm going to do is take the machine, put some tack welds all the way around it. That'll do a couple of things. Number one, it'll show me how this material is going to respond to the filler metal that I'm using. And once I get it tacked up in a bunch of places, I'll be able to take it out of the fixture, set it here on the workbench, and move it into positions where it's a lot easier to weld than kind of sideways or upside down. The machine is set to about 190 amps. We're about 75% unbalanced, but we're going to weld with a really low frequency. Welding with a lower frequency on cast sometimes tends to not disturb the impurities as much. I guess that's the best way I can explain it and, and keep them down in the material. So we're going to be welding right now. We're going to try about 40 to 50 amps. I've got it set on 40. We're going to give it a try. If I like it, we'll keep welding. If not, we'll jump back in here and turn the frequency up to around 50. Okay, good news. It looks like it welded fairly well. Next step for us is gonna to be to take a grinder and or a rotary burr, and we're gonna take a good portion of that weld back out. We'll probably do it one side at a time so that it stays located and we don't take a chance of grinding all the weld back out of it and taking it off. We'll come back and re-weld it one more time. This time, hopefully, a lot of the impurities are, are gone. They're out of there. But I'd still like to grind it out and then re-weld it because it's a very small part. It's not going to take very long to re-weld it. All right, so we got it done. Put a little bit of extra material, a little re extra reinforcement in there for Dale to be able to machine back out. That way he's got plenty to do what he wants to do. This sucker is really, really hot. So I'm going to pitch it to Dale and see if he can grab it. Before I do that, hey bud, here's a uh, new pair of gloves for you. You're going to need them. Yeah. <laughs> nice throw, Jim. You got quite an arm there. Let me get on these Lincoln electric welding gloves. Kind of sounds like a commercial. Hmm. They're actually really nice. This is a great, I'll call it a gift for now because you're not going to get them back. All right. All right, Dale, you ready? Catch it like it's hot. Because it is. Nice throw. Ouch. Still hot. Still hot. Look at that weld reinforcement. That looks fantastic. Jim, thanks again so much. Now I'm gonna take it over the mill, get this thing finished up. Well, there we go. The part is now been welded, it's been machined, and it looks perfect. It's, I think it's actually stronger than the original. And now all I have to do is just fit this all back together to get it to look like that machine back there. Jim, you did an excellent job of welding. Thanks. All right, guys, until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.